Okay, so in this video we're going to go over rooms, we're going to go over room separator, and then tags for room. So basically whenever you design a building, whether it be house or a commercial building, more than likely you're going to want to do room labels, so that way you know the purpose of each room. So in this case, this is just like a little house. So the first thing we're going to do is click on room. So when we bring our cursor down into our building, uh, for example this room down here, we can see two things. There's an X and then there's a tag or basically a label that says room and then a number. Up here in the right, it's already selected to place the tag, so giving it a name and a number. If you click this off so that way it's not blue, you're going to see it's just simply an X now. And if I were to click, it's going to place a feature called a room, so that way when you create a schedule, it's going to show you exactly how many rooms you have, and it can show you how many square foot that room is. But in this case, because I want to put a tag on it, I'm going to select this, and I'm going to bring it back down, and I'm going to go ahead and just left click to place. And right now, every time I place is going to create a space. You can see here that it's blue and it's going to say room and then it's going to give it a number. If it's the first one you place, typically it's going to say number one. Uh, just because before doing this I had placed a couple additional rooms on something else, that's why mine started at eight. But yours should start at one and go from one, two, three, four, and so forth. One issue you may face is in an open concept you're going to see when I bring my cursor over here um, it's selecting this entire area even though there's actually separate rooms here. So this would be like my living room up here, kitchen, dining room, and foyer. So what I need to do in order to fix that, to actually divide it into four rooms, is hit escape twice or once and come back to our ribbon and it's called a room separator. So we're going to select room separator and basically what this does is you just use your draw tools to create a line separating that area. So in this case I'm going to use my line segment and create a line going straight across because this is going to be my kitchen. Then I'm going to create a line kind of just angling down here to represent my dining room. Then I'm going to just make another line going across here from wall to wall because this top right area is going to be my living room and then I just have let's say a large foyer. Okay. So I'm just going to hit escape twice to go back, select my room again, and now when I go back and click, you're going to see that each area that you just divided is now its own room. Okay, so once you have all of them with rooms, you're going to hit escape, and then if you take your cursor and hover over your room, you should see a little X appear as you bring your cursor like over the room. Basically that's showing you that there is a room feature assigned to that space and if you click it's going to select that room. Not the walls, not the floor, but that room feature. And then within that you can simply just left click where it says room and then it'll basically kind of go into an edit mode and then if you click again you can change the name of that room. Um, make sure that you always change your room names because not every room is called room. Okay, so in this case, we'll just call it living room, and then we'll click off into the free space. I'm gonna come over to this one, left click, left click, change it to kitchen, and so forth. If you want to change the number, you can simply just left click, left click on the number, and change it to whatever you want. So if I wanted it to be one. I can go ahead and click. Uh, you might run into a situation where a little error message appears and it says something already has that number. Um, in that case, just hit close and do a quick double check and make sure that you didn't use that number somewhere else. Okay. Um, so from there as well, uh, a couple of features is when you select the tag. Okay. So not only having just like the room feature itself selected, but when you select the tag of that room, there's a couple options up here in your properties. So the first one, room tag, you can change it. So it says room tag, room tag with area, room tag with volume. In this case, maybe you wanted the area. It will then tell you exactly how large 
that room is in square feet. Okay, same thing, let's say if I come over here and orientation, right now it's horizontal, maybe for some reason you wanna change it to vertical, depending on the layout of the house, you can do that. And then it's just an easy switch back. Okay, um, the last part here is tag room. The only reason that is important is I'm gonna get rid of this one here. So right now, what I did is I deleted the room feature here. If I select room and choose not to do a tag, I'll click here and you can see, now I have this room feature, but there's no tag. So if you ever do that by accident, if you have the room feature, but no tag, simply just come up here to tag room, click tag room, and then you just come down and place the tag at that specific room and now it's just like you had done on the other ones. So creating rooms is pretty simple. Uh, the best thing to do is always do them at the same time as you add on. You can slowly keep adding, but you always just want to be careful. One, what you're giving each number, make sure you're not duplicating. And second is give each room a name or at least a proper name so that way when you create a color schedule, which will be another video, everything is accurate.